Hey there, future Lindsay here. Uh, this is Sat Chat. I forgot to mention something at the beginning of the video <laughs> when I recorded it. Oh man, it's been a day. Anyway, I just wanted to let you know that I'm having a sale in my Teachable School, 40% off if you use the coupon code MEMORIAL22, and that is good through um, the 31st, so that it's good through the day after Memorial Day. So if you want to get a class and save 40%, you can go check that out. I'll put a link in the video description so you can find it. And now, without further ado, here's Sat Chat. Hi there, Lindsay here. It is Sat Chat time. I'm the frugal crafter, or maybe I'm not. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know anything anymore. It is Sat Chat time. I'm filming this on Friday afternoon. And if you are new here, Sat Chat is just basically a weekly wrap up, chit chatty video. I started these during the pandemic, just as a place for the community to hang out and um, have, take their mind off of the craziness in the world. Hopefully have a smile or two and commiserate with, uh, with a fellow crafty friend. Um, and I'm Lindsay the Frugal Crafter, as I stated before. Maybe not so frugal, but the name just stuck. I don't know. I don't know what to say. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> oh, it's been quite a week. Uh, so last weekend, last Saturday actually, um, I was making breakfast and I film my sat chats either on Thursday or Friday. Usually Friday unless I have uh, some sort of uh, plans on Friday and I know I'm not going to be home to film. So, uh, and so some of you guys, if you've been in the chat, if you were chatting with me last weekend, you would have known my tale of woe, my powerful tale of woe, which is, <laughs> I got up Saturday morning and, um, well, let's back up about a week. The ice maker stopped working in our refrigerator. So we have one of those, um, it's actually a really nice fridge. It's, uh, it's like one of those side by side fridge doors. And then on the bottom is the freezer. Luckily, we also have a like chest freezer in the basement. And uh, so the ice maker stopped working. So I didn't think anything of it. My husband um, bought some ice because we figured maybe things need to recharge or maybe um, the filter need to be changed or something. We didn't know what was going on. Um, but then I was making breakfast and um, I tend to eat whatever I feel like for breakfast. So I didn't feel like eating breakfast food, but I had some leftover broccoli and I wanted to throw some veggie crumbles in it. And I felt like having that for breakfast. And I took the veggie crumbles out of the freezer and they were not frozen, they were thawed. And I'm like, that's unusual. So I turned down the temperature on the freezer, didn't think too much of it. And then um, about an hour later, I go to get something else out of the freezer and I'm noticing that there is just water in one of the one of the drawers where an ice, a, a uh, bag of ice had been. And so I was like, oh no. So I just scrambled to get everything into the chest freezer that wasn't like questionable looking. And um, and I put, put a thermometer in the fridge to see, because the fridge didn't seem like it was very cold. And yeah, at, at some point the, the freezer and refrigerator stopped working. So uh, then I was thinking, well, should we repair it? It's 15 years old. Um, and so I started doing all sorts of research and pretty much everybody said, all these different websites that I looked at said that um, if your refrigerator is over 10 years old, you shouldn't bother repairing it because you'll be sinking money into something that's just gonna, that's at the end of its life anyway. And I'm like, 10 years? Really? 10 years? That's all we get from some expensive big piece of metal? Um, and the, the dishwasher died the day after Christmas. I still haven't replaced it. I, I cleaned it out and I'm using it for Tupperware storage, honestly, because it's like, I don't want to spend a bunch of money for something that's gonna last five years and need to be replaced again and then go in the landfill. Because you know those little bits and bobs and computery things in these modern appliances, you know they're going, they're landfilling it. They may like save the door and recycle that, may melt that down to something, but I'm pretty sure everything else is just getting getting chucked. So I was pretty, um, pretty uh, disgusted with that. But uh, so we ordered a new fridge and it will be delivered a week from today. So it's like, oh my word. But luckily um, during the uh, first pandemic Christmas, uh, because we were staying home and I knew it was gonna be kind of a bummer for the kids, we got the kids all uh, mini fridges and we stocked them with like their favorite beverages. Um, it just so kind of like a like oh just something kind of extra and uh and fun because we wouldn't be able to go and visit family that year and um so luckily they all have mini fridges in their rooms so we were like totally taking out all their like <laughs> all their beverages and putting in our our groceries and stuff it was um it's been very it's been inconvenient but i'm lucky that we that we have that so uh the refrigerator is not one of those things i'm going to see like do without and see how much i really need it like the coffee maker the coffee maker is another thing that broke either i have some sort of bad juju with electronics which maybe is true or we're getting power surges or something the air conditioning the air conditioning went out and a brand new heat pump so we put in the addition so that they're not even like two years old and um they weren't working when we went to use them on that 90 degree day a couple of weeks ago. So, um, 
no idea what's going on there. So I don't know. I'm like, are we having heat surges? Um, uh, you know, is the house possessed? I don't know. But that's been my aggravation. And then to, to top off the aggravation, I was having some computer aggravation today. <laughs> and uh, oh my gosh, I try not to complain, but my word, it's been a week. It's been a week, friends. So um, I, well, I had a video and I wasn't quite sure about it. It's one of those videos where it's like, I think people will watch it, but is it something I want to post? Kind of one of those things you sometimes you post a video and you're like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's good. I think it's entertaining. But then again, I think it'll get a lot of views, but I think some people won't like it and some people will be upset. So, um, but I'm like, I'm going to, I'm like, I, my, my channel, my videos are tanking. I need a boost. My channel needs a shot in the arm. And, um, you could probably already guess what kind of video it is, but by now, I bet you can, because I've I've talked about my my the the, the YouTube uh, algorithm and preferences. Because honestly, I've been I have been posting a lot of longer format uh, art lessons on YouTube, and I don't know if they don't get shown to people or if people just don't like them and don't click on them. But let me tell you, I post an unboxing, and it's like people are coming out of the woodworks to see what comes out of the box. I don't know. Um, so anyway, so I've posted quite a few longer tutorials and they are sucking wind big time. Um, so I'm like, I need a win guys. I need, I need a shot in the arm. I need one of those videos that are going to like, that YouTube is going to actually show people that people won't have to go to their sub feed and scroll down and find my channel and, and watch it. So I know YouTubers complaining. Ooh, what's new? Um, so anyway, so I, I, uh, uploaded this video this morning before I went, uh, went for a while, actually. I rendered it. I had a rendering because uh, I had worked a long day yesterday and I didn't get a chance to edit that one. And I'm like, I'm going to put that one up today. I didn't have a Frugal Friday video, but um, but I'll post that today. And it's a two-parter. And the second part, I think the people who complain about the first part will love the second part, but I can't. The second part is going to be a live video, but I can't publish the live schedule video until the original video is up because it will make sense if I do that because both videos have to be, they there has to be awareness of both videos at once, I think. So um, I'm trying to keep two communities on YouTube happy with this two for a videos that I'm really excited for. And I think it's actually going to be kind of fun. I know many a little backlash from it. So it's one of those, um, they both have to go up together is, is the thing. And so I uploaded this video. It was like, it was like 1030 in the morning. It's 230 now. Um, and it uploaded, you know, 20 minutes like it usually does, but it's like waiting to process, waiting to process, waiting to process. So after about an hour of waiting to process, I uploaded it again to see if um, it would go through. Because remember like um, last year I was doing some long card making workshops on YouTube and like the end of the video for like the first few hours it was published, it would freeze. And I would upload it like days in advance so that it would have a chance to process and work its way out. And it would not stop freezing until it had been live on YouTube for a couple hours. So I don't know if it's a situation where the video is too, too long. I, I compressed it a little bit more so it wouldn't be such a big file, but I don't know. Uh, so anyways, I've got some, um, I've got some technical issues there. So I'm kind of feeling like I can't, uh, if I touch anything, it's going to like go on the fritz. Like I've got the opposite of the Midas touch. I've got the, I've got the, the Fritz touch. It's not the Midas touch. It's the Fritz touch. You touch something, it goes on the Fritz. Uh, so how's your week going? Hopefully, hopefully better than this. Uh, so I had my yearly physical this, uh, this week. That's so much fun. You know, you know, here's what bothers me. I've been trying to get an eye appointment for months and I finally got one and then everybody came down with COVID at my house. So I had to cancel it because I was like, um, I was coming up the, the following week and like people were dropping like flies in my house. And I'm like, I'm like, well, I'm going to have to call the doctor's office probably anyway and let them know why this household exposure, they probably won't want me to come in. But I'm like, well, if I'm, but because it was like a Monday morning, like a first thing Monday morning appointment. And it's like, I could come down with it over the weekend, but that decision was made for me. Anyway, I did test positive, so I called to reschedule the appointment. And it was like a month and a half before I could get in. For an appointment that I want to get, I've got to wait months and months. For an appointment that I really don't want to go to, they're like, well, get you in next with physical? You want to, hey, we had, can, can we sign you up for a mammogram and a colostomy while we're at it? Because, hey, look at that. We got, a, we got a cancellation. We can get you right in. It's like, how come the good appointments that you actually want to go to are so far in the future? And all the unpleasant ones that you really want to put off as far as possible they could get you right in. No lines, no waiting, friends. You know, so, uh, so frustrating. So frustrating. <laughs> I just want to see, guys. I just want to see. I just want my eyes to be, uh, to be checked. But end of June, end of June. I'll have to, 
uh, I see all right. I see all right, but I definitely noticed that um, my eyes get tired earlier. I think my prescriptions changed a little bit because um, I think, you know, I got a case of the mid 40s and it's uh, <sighs> it's not great for your eyes. Um, oh, wow, I have a list. I, I think it was mostly about me complaining about appliances. <laughs> that's that's the topic of the sat chat. I'm gonna complain about appliances for uh, for some time. Oh, you know what? I do have a few new a uh, few new things here. So uh, this is up in Critique Club right now. It is. Um, I'm using actually. Ooh, this is kind of this is kind of. Uh, <laughs> It's not. I'm like, ooh, this is some hot tea. No, it isn't. It's, um, I was using these markers and they're acrylic paint pens and I had been using them with uh, mixed media stuff. They're the brush, t I don't, do I still have them in here? Oh, what'd I do with them? Oh, I don't, oh, they're over there. I can't reach them. Um, so they're the, they're the Artix dual ended markers, but you know what? They're kind of, they remind me a lot of a Tombow marker because they have the same tips, a brush tip and a bullet tip, and they feel very similar, very flexible, responsive brush tip. But it says they're an acrylic paint pen, but when you get them and you open them up, there's, you don't have to pump them. You don't need to activate them. They're just ready to go. And I'm like, that's weird. I've never had a pen like that. I've never had an acrylic paint pen like that, but they all worked. Nothing was clogged, but they weren't super opaque or didn't have a lot of coverage. So I thought, you know, I'd swatched them on black and white and I was looking at them like, you know, I think I'd like to use them on some white paper. I think they'd actually be a really nice art medium. And I really liked them on white paper. They worked really well. Um, but then I realized that, I, that they were blending out kind of like a gouache. So um, anyway, I did film, I, I filmed that project for Critique Club. There'll be a time lapse on YouTube tomorrow. And I think they're kind of, they're really fun and great for doing art with, but they're definitely not an acrylic paint pen. If you went and painted rocks or like ceramics or glass or anything like that, it's going to wash off. But for artwork, it was really fun. It was really fun to use. So, um, so that, uh, time lapse will be tomorrow on YouTube and the real time version is up in Critique Club if you want to draw it, paint along. But the thing I really, uh, I realized about the, the topic of marbles, I painted marbles a few times over the years. It's, marbles are a fun thing to paint to get used to something new. So whether you're trying to get used to your water-based markers or your real brush pens or your alcohol markers or um, a new set of brushes that you're not quite, you know, you want to kind of get, get the hang of a new, maybe you're trying like a softer brush or a firmer brush or a gouache or something like that, something different. Doing marbles is a great exercise to get used to a new type of media. You don't have to think too much. You just draw circles and then you make each marble. And if you have some marbles around, you can throw, scatter them on a piece of cloth so you can like pick them up and look at them. And um, it's just a really great subject. You, you can kind of zen out and just kind of relax. And I needed some zen this week, let me tell you. Uh, so you just kind of chill and relax and paint marbles. You just gotta draw some circles and you can trace circles. So it's just a nice way to get used to a new media. So that would be a tip that I would give you if you are kind of stuck. If you're like, I don't know what I wanna draw. I don't know what I wanna paint. I'm just, I'm just stuck. So, so that's coming up and um, I will have a review next week. I think on Wednesday, which is weird because um, I think the video that's supposed to be up Friday, I don't know, we'll see if it's, if it's up. And then it's up by now. I don't know. It's currently, it's still uploading. And then it's like, well, I don't think I want to, publish a video this late in the day because then Satchat comes out at 7 a.m. And if I post a video after noontime, then there's a shorter span between that video and Satchat. And then, you know, if I haven't gotten that many views on a previous video, it won't recommend the next video. It's like dominoes. It's like your next video depends on the success of your last video, unless it's something completely new and exciting and different. You know, if your last video didn't do well, your next video is not going to be recommended. So it's just you get punished for you get punished for posting long form educational content. Uh, so I got to kind of mix it up here and there or um, or I'll just fade into the ether and <laughs> no one will know whatever happened to the frugal crafter. She used to be here all the time. She used to do so well, but then she started posting long videos and <laughs> and now she is irrelevant. Um, and it's also summer and I just, I always, I have to tell myself because I always freak out in the summer because my views are lower in the summer. And I think that's because my audience is adult female. It's like mostly adult female and it's pretty evenly spread from, you know, ages 24 to 65 plus. It's a pretty, it's pretty evenly spread. And so most adult women have, well, I don't say most, but a lot of adult women have um, children to take care of in the summer or grandchildren to take care of in the summer or they're traveling with their family and friends during the summer because it's easier to book flights and, and people have time off and you don't have to worry about snowstorms. So, um, 
So yeah, people are less apt to want to be inside painting or crafting in the summer. They want to be outside where it's beautiful, especially if you live someplace that's temperate where, you know, these these beautiful days do not last. I mean, you get a couple months and then it's back to Siberia, you know? So I can totally see that, but it's still really hard not to look at those numbers and kind of freak out a little bit like, this is my livelihood, I'm going to be in a van down by the river, you know? <laughs> You know, just kind of ah, have a little freak out. So I'm trying not to have a little freak out, although I'm kind of having a little freak out. I'm trying not to have a freak out. I got a fridge to buy, friends. <laughs> the videos I've got to keep going. They kind of get washed. Oh, guys, I'm just being neurotic. Um, but what else? I, I had a list. I did write some things down. I don't even know where for. Oh, we're only 14 minutes in. Does, doesn't this video feel like it's three hours long? <laughs> it does to me. I feel like I've been talking for like uh, three years. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, so last week I talked about the, um, uh, the, <laughs> my problem website, which I thought I had all figured out, but I didn't, but that's all right. I'm just, uh, I'm abandoning that idea again. I was right to abandon it in the first place. Um, anything can be dealt through my blog. I enjoy updating my blog. I enjoy the way the blog is laid out. Um, so if I have anything, I'll put it there. I don't know. Uh, it was frustrating. And I don't want more frustration in my life. I don't want to have more tedium. I don't want to have more um, expense. I don't want to have more aggravation. So those things that <laughs> that create expense, tediousness, and aggravation are they're out of here. Shut it down. It's got to go. <laughs> that does not spark joy. I'm con marrying it out of my life. Uh, oh, so this was funny. So I talk about... <laughs> remember I was talking about the, uh, the crap I buy my husband for his birthday that he never uses? Well... Um, I was, uh, I was reclaiming a large canvas last week. It was a canvas that I painted. I had a two pack of these massive canvases. They were like three feet by four feet. And, um, in a rage one day I painted one and I was very upset and just depressed and just aggravated and irritated and all those things you probably shouldn't, you probably shouldn't create large artworks when you're feeling these feelings because then you have to look at that art, large artwork that just reminds you of how aggravated and upset you were. So anyways, I had this big painting that I painted and, um, and I didn't like it and I hadn't, and I just, I didn't like it. And so I'm like, you know, I'm going to gesso over that. But I didn't want to waste my good gesso on that because I hate that painting as it is. So, you know, I don't want to waste my, my favorite gesso. My favorite white gesso is actually the Jerry's Artorama. It's called like World's Greatest Gesso, but it's the Jerry's Artorama brand. And I get it. I think it's a, a pint. It's It comes in like a... It comes in like a wide mouth jar. The, the mouth is probably about that big. So you can dip your brush right in it. And it's so thick and it's so wonderful. And um, I didn't want to waste it on that crappy painting covering it up. So what I did instead was I I found this old gallon of gesso that I had that was like pro art economy gesso. And um, it's many, many years old. And in fact, at one point, uh, the the a lot of the water had like separated out of the, out of the paint. And so I poured it off and I stirred it up and made a nice thick gesso out of it. And it worked pretty well. I liked it a lot better than it was originally. It was very watery. It was not great. Um, I think I bought it at Martin's. So who knows what fire it had been in <laughs> if it was at Martin's. Uh, but it wasn't chunky or anything. So I got all that gallon. And I'm like, I'm going to stir this up and I'm going to use this to um, to gesso that big, ugly, ugly canvas. And um, so I'm trying to stir it. I was trying to stir it with like a dowel or something, or maybe the handle of a paintbrush, and it ain't moving. Uh, so I went and got a paint, an actual paint stirrer stick from uh, Mr. Frugal's workshop. And still, I'm like, I'm going to break this paint stirrer. It is so thick. So then I seem to remember, I don't remember if I bought this or if my husband had it, but have you ever seen those, um, they're, they're like a long stick and they've got like this circle with a, like a blade on the end. And it's for putting in a drill and put mixing up, um, like cement and things like that. So it's like, it's like a, it's like a drill mixer. So I'm like, ah, I know what I can use. So I went over to the paint, the, the big tote where we have all of our painting and it was in the painting tote. So it made me think I'm going to do, that must be for paint. So, uh, so I found it and I took Jason's corded Makita drill because I figured, Hey, I need some power because that gesso is thick and I need to mix it up. So I got the corded Makita and I plugged that into the wall. Plus he likes his rechargeable drills. He won't even miss it. He won't miss that if I do anything to it. If I, I don't know, splash it or <laughs> drop it in a bucket of paint. He, I mean, he won't even notice. So I took that drill and, uh, and I didn't want to deal with batteries or batteries even charged. I need power. I want this stuff mixed and I want it mixed now. I'm not a patient person. 
And so I plugged that in, and I had the uh, the bucket on the floor over in the room of Hoard over there where I do all my messy, messy projects. And uh, I stuck that in there, and I <laughs> I pulled the trigger on that sucker, <laughs> and I wore paint. You would not believe it. it wasn't even a full gallon. You would have swore I wore a gallon of paint. It was like up my jeans, <laughs> all over my shoes, all over the rug over there. Luckily, it's. It's paint spattered in there anyway. I don't worry about anything over there. It's meant for like you know. It's meant for chaos, and uh, and I just I just started laughing. I was like I was just I thought that was the most hilarious thing ever. I was just like oh my word I can't believe I just did that. So then not to be discouraged, I I grabbed the paint can with my feet to hold it tight. So I'm standing up. I get the paint can with my feet and I'm holding the drill and uh, and I'm like and I'm bracing myself and I'm like. And because it wants to kind of dance away from you and I'm like gripping that thing with my feet and I'm pulling back on that trigger for all it's worth and we finally got that gesso mixed up and it was like, I felt like I was like running a jackhammer or something because that thing is like, <laughs> it was going crazy. And uh, it was thick, man, but it wasn't chunky. It was, it was still viable, viable gesso. So anyways, I mixed that up and um, I basically just, uh, I just used a palette knife to scrape it over there because I want, because the, the painting that was ugly that I was covering up was very textured. I'd used like Liquitex heavy body paint. So, I mean, it, I really needed to like speckle that sucker on there like uh, Venetian plaster because it was so textured. I And I have an idea of what I'm gonna do with that. It's kind of an experimental piece, but having the extra, I needed to get rid of the texture of the painting I already had there and I wanted to have just kind of something really gritty and structural and uh, and whatnot. So I turned the aggravating painting into a comical farce that I laugh about. I mean, I was telling my friend about it and I'm like, Kathy, you're not going to believe. And I'm like, can I laugh so hard? She's like, I'm glad you laughed. I would have been so PO'd <laughs> or something to that effect. But you had to laugh. You have to laugh. What are you going to do? when life throws you dead refrigerators and coffee makers, but laugh, because <laughs> cause you ain't gonna find a repairman, so you might as well laugh and, you know, try to move on with your life. Uh, what else? What else? Oh, we did this, t we did this the other day. Um, this right here was really fun. It's a, uh, it's a, um, oh, by the way, I'm having a sale in my, in my, um, my teachable school, 40% off with coupon code MEMORIAL22. So it's a Memorial Day weekend sale, so you can take 40% off any of my classes with that. And we did this on the um, uh, watercolor lesson this week, and it's in real time. It's easy. It's, I don't want to say quick and easy because it took almost 40 minutes, but um, it's fun and it's easy, and there's a lot of brush work, and there's, it's an economy of brush strokes though. It's to kind of show how to get a looser feel. Um, so if you're interested in that, that's free. It's up on my channel. You can enjoy that lesson. We give you something to do if you have a nice long holiday weekend. Oh, what about this? I don't know. I was cleaning up a palette and just kind of playing, but I kind of like it. Isn't that fun? Oh, look, that's on the back of the, uh, oh, wow. Huh. I would have swore I painted that before I painted that, but I didn't. Or maybe I did. That's weird, because I remember just recently painting this, but I thought I painted this a long time ago. I am totally freaked out. I'm really freaked out at the moment. But anyways, I kind of like the way that looks. I don't know why. I was just kind of playing, but I kind of like it. And this was my uh, Paul Rubens guac eye metallic landscape, which isn't as ugly as I thought it was, but um, that's freaking me out because I could have swore that I painted that. I could have swore I threw that away. I thought I threw that away, and I thought I painted that in the past, but now I'm totally freaked out. We got some strange energy in my space. I got strange energy. All the broken appliances, time warp, Video not uploading? What do you think? I don't know. I don't want a poltergeist. I don't know what's going on, but it's very bizarre. I don't know if I have anything else to talk about. <laughs> oh, man. You know what's been crazy? The, uh, the last week, I found these crazy sales. Was it this week or last week? Oh my word, what a time warp. I think it was, I think it was last weekend, maybe coming, I don't know. I don't know, but there was a bunch of Sennelier paint that was like Sennelier paint sets that were really cheap on Amazon. And somebody had a great point. They thought maybe they were changing their packaging. Um, 
And that's why, because sometimes they will liquidate stuff when packaging changes different companies. Something that sometimes happens is like if a seller's getting low on stock on an item that like uh, lives at Amazon, the Amazon fulfills, I think they have to pay um, like almost like a rent for like keeping that stuff in the warehouses. And once the stock gets low, if they're not going to restock it. So I think sometimes they sell it off real cheap because they want to clear up that space so they don't have to pay the rent on it anymore. I have a feeling there's something, if there's something like that where if you're, if they're fulfilling your products, maybe you're like, you have to pay so much per month until they're all, they're all out. I don't know. I don't know how it works, but I know the sellers have to pay a lot to uh, to sell through Amazon. And a lot of, the, most of the art supplies I buy are, they're fulfilled by Amazon, but they're sold by third party sellers. And, and um, what I do is I look into the company that I'm buying from and I'll buy ones that are fulfilled by Amazon. And uh, so, I mean, oftentimes it's Jerry's Autorama or it's Blick. I tend to buy from those, those websites if I know, if I have like a big enough order, but if I just need like one thing, then, um, the shipping charges make it more than what it would be on Amazon. So that's what I, that's what I typically do. So, I mean, like I have no problem buying from third party sellers because most of them are just small businesses or even like medium sized businesses, but they're, you know, they kind of got to be on Amazon to be able to reach the people. That's sad fact of, of, uh, of these days. But anyway, um, yeah, I, I, I resisted, man. I resisted the temptation of, uh, well, most all of it. I resisted the um, the Sennelier 18 half pan set for $40 because I bought that, um, like it was like six years ago. I bought the um, the same thing. I got it from Blix. So I think I paid like 60 to 65, somewhere in that because it was an introductory special. And I thought it was like a limited time thing. Uh, it wasn't supposed to be around this long. Maybe So maybe they're just trying to get rid of them because it wasn't supposed to be a forever uh, forever deal. So it was basically like get 18 for the price of 12. And, um, and I thought it was a great deal at that. And I liked the paint and I, and, uh, then I bought a few colors, open stock and added them into that, that set. So I made it kind of made my own Sennelier set. So I did it. So I was able to, to pass on that because there were some colors I wouldn't rebuy some colors I loved and I've, and I bought tubes to refill, but other ones I was like, ah, yeah, I'm never going to finish up that pan of cinnamon blue or, um, I think it was like a Chinese orange. Maybe there was like a sepia and maybe even a black. I mean, so those colors I typically don't use. So I'm like, I'm not going to buy that, that set for replacements because there's enough colors that I wouldn't use. Let somebody else have it. That's fine. But it still is a great deal for someone wanting to try out that paint. But what almost what almost tempted me, and honestly, it's I, I put it in my cart, but I'm like, well, uh, I'm gonna think about it a little bit, and it was it sold out so fast, sold out in like half an hour, I think. But it was eight tubes in a palette of Sennelier paint for forty dollars, and it was like, wow, that was a pretty good deal. The colors were great, and the colors were ones I would use, but I had recently inventoried my watercolor, and I knew I had. Um, multiple tubes of each of those pigments. So even if they were all Sennelier, I still knew I had enough of those paints that I didn't want to, uh, that would just be kind of like, I want to say it kind of be excessive because this is all excessive. Uh, I fully admit to that, but I'm like, yeah, I do not need, I do not need more backups because I have backups and backups already. Um, so I wasn't, so I was tempted and I had it in my cart, but it got, luckily it got sold out before I could, before I could get to it. I feel bad though. A lot of people were really bummed out about that. Um, but, uh, but I did end up getting another Owen palette to replace ones as I use up for my other one. And I'm glad I did that. Cause I can also plop a pan into another set that needs like a certain color. So, um, I think those are sold out now, but anyway, it was kind of crazy. It was kind of a crazy week of deals, but Anyway, it looks like my time's going to run out on my video camera. I want to thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a great weekend. Let me know what you're doing in the comments below. And until next time, happy crafting. Bye.